Okay, let's talk about how you go about dealing with solution stoichiometry. There's basically three types of questions, 11.9, 11.10, and 11.11, and I'll go through one of each of them to give you a flavor of how they work. So uh, this one, there's a side, set of slides explaining this on the PowerPoint for the notes, so I'll go straight to this one. Um, for this particular question, one of the first things that stands out upon examining it is that it gives you information about one chemical and asks about some other different chemical. So because of that, it's definitely going to be a stoichiometry problem. That means it's necessary to write a balanced equation and then con do conversions that lead to and from unit of moles. So balanced equation. Let's see, excess NaCl is added to a solution of that chemical. So that's mm, NaCl plus... SrNO32. Okay, so that's sodium chloride and strontium nitrate. Double displacement reaction, so that means the sodium pairs with the nitrate. And strontium pairs with chlorine. So that's the, um, these formulas are, you come up with these formulas because sodium is a 1 plus, nitrate is a 1 minus, that's the correct formula. Strontium is a 2 plus, chlorine is a 1 minus, that's the reason for that formula. You need a balance, of course, 1 sodium, 1 sodium, 1 chlorine, 2 chlorines. Oh, okay, so there's a 2 there, so let's put a 2 right there. And the 2 sodiums, um, let's see, I'll have to put 2 right there. And the 2 nitrates, that takes care of that. Okay, so having done that, the next item of business is to come up with the actual calculations. So first of all, you need to take what you're given. Wait, which one is do you take? In the end, you get the same no matter what, but typically with these, um, you can break molarity down to moles per liter. So I'll do this one first just because it doesn't break down to anything. So 3.21 liters times 0.3. 300 moles per liter of SRNO3 there you go that just add in the chemical identity helps keep things straight so uh, the reason why you use these two is because all stoichiometry problems you need to somehow get to moles because every stoichiometry problem is convert to moles of what you're given, and then for moles of what you're given to whatever unit it wants of the thing it's asking about. So in this case, it's asked about this chemical, information about this chemical, asked about this chemical. So um, that means that I took the molarity, broke it down to moles per liter like this. So this is this, and now I can do conversion. Now that I'm in units of mole, because liters cancel liters to give moles, I can take the balanced equation, and it says that for every one mole of strontium nitrate. There is one mole of the chemical I'm asking about. What mass is solid? Strontium chloride. So there's one mole of this. So one mole SrCl2. And then it's asking for, so that's from the units I'm given to moles. For moles of what I'm given to moles of what I want. Now from moles of what I want to what it's asking for, which is grams of what I want. So uh, that means I need the molar mass, which turns out to be 158.52 grams per mole of uh, strontium chloride. Extend that. Okay, so you do the calculation. 3.21 liters. Times point, oops, times point three zero zero times, let's see, 158.52 gives that number. And with the three sig figs right here and three sig figs right here, we'll round this to three significant figures, which would be 153. 153 grams of strontium chloride is the amount we expect to be produced when that many liters of this solution reacts with extra of this chemical to make this chemical. Yeah, when it says excess NaCl, that's another way of saying don't worry about including it in your calculation. It doesn't, 
you've got it's just saying you have enough that you're not going to run out and that's all and that's fine um, it just means it's the excess reactant and then this is the limiting reactant right here then this is what's going to determine how much you make so that's how you handle that question let's look at how you do another one okay this chemical equation right here so the way you handle this one is again same thing you need to come up with a chemical balanced chemical equation so it says this reacts with this so Na3PO4 reacts with CABr2 that's sodium phosphate reacts with calcium bromide classic double displacement reaction this sodium will pair up with the bromine NABr is the correct formula for sodium bromide. And as for the other chemical, calcium will pair up with phosphate. So CAPO4. And the correct formula is the calcium is a 2 plus, so we put that 2 down here. Phosphorus has a 3 minus charge, so we put that 3 down here at parentheses. And that's the correct formula for calcium phosphate. Okay, now you've got to balance it. And when you do, uh, well, let's see how it comes out. 3 calcium, 3 sodiums. So you've got to put a three right here or actually now i got any more than that because it occurs to me look there's two phosphoruses so you need two so that's six sodiums so I'll put a six right here six bromines let's make it three that way there's six bromines and need three calcium three calcium so six bromines six bromines six sodium six sodium okay it's all good all right so having done that next step is figure out the calculation so um, which one do i start with this chemical or this chemical's information the answer is whichever one can give me moles is the one i'm going to start with now this has moles in it molarity is after all moles per liter but this one has moles per liter and a volume that i can work with so the one that i have molarity and volume is the one i start with now that being said this is moles per liter Moles per liter is not compatible with milliliters. You have to convert this to milliliters or, or from milliliters to liters before you can do anything. So that's what we'll do. We're going to take a 46.3 milliliters and convert to liters, where one liter is 1,000 milliliters. And that's 0 0.0463 liters. So that's... Once it's in liters, now we can actually like begin the calculation. So 0 0.0463 liters of this molarity calcium bromide. So that's 1.00 moles per liter, right? Molarity is moles per liter. CABr2, CABr2. Okay. Liters cancel liters, you have moles. Oh, good, now I can do my moles to mole conversion now that moles is the answer once these liters cancel. Um, there are calcium bromide, we see uh, three moles. So three moles of calcium bromide from the equation. And we're being asked for how many milliliters of this? So I need to find this chemical right here. Two moles of sodium phosphate. And next is determined by what I'm being asked for. Okay, what am I being asked for? I'm being asked for how many milliliters of this? All right, well, this, remember this is moles per liter, so this contains moles of this stuff. So let's set the moles per liter. That way moles can cancel moles because liters cancel liters, moles cancel moles of calcium bromide. Now moles of sodium phosphate need to cancel moles of sodium phosphate. Na3PO4, Na3PO4. Okay, so uh, what's it say? 0.750 moles per liter. So 0 0.750 moles per one liter. This is the molarity broken down into moles per liter. And then of course, the moles cancel moles, give liters is the answer, but it doesn't want liters, it wants milliliters. So let's do one final conversion where one liter is 1,000 milliliters. And that'll give the answer, which I will put down here. Now, uh, when you do this on your calculator, this will look like, okay, what is it? 0 0.0463 times one, whoops, 0 0.0463 times one, 
times two divided by three, right? Times two divided by three, divided by 0 0.750 equals times 1,000 equals that. Okay, that's our calculator answer. Wait, how do we round it? Three sig figs right here, three sig figs right here, three sig figs right here. So let's call it three sig figs. That's 41.2. 41.2 milliliters of, what is this, 0 0.750 molar Na3, oops, you can't even see that on screen, PO4. That's the final answer, 41.2 milliliters of it. Okay, and that's how we got there. Again, three sig figs because of three sig figs. And notice how we made sure that units cancel all the way. Liters cancel liters, moles cancel moles. For one chemical, moles of a different chemical cancel moles of a different chemical. Liters cancel liters, give milliliters in the answer. And we give milliliters only because it asks for milliliters. Okay, let's do last one. Mm, example problem 11-11a. So uh, for solving, actually no, let's do part B. So for this particular one right here, um, first thing we need to do is once again the balanced equation. Well, actually not, ah, let's do A. It's the same thing, it doesn't matter. Um, different numbers, different chemicals, same thing. So uh, let's see, figure out the balanced equation. It says that sodium sulfate and lead nitrate are mixed, right, the lead 2 nitrate. So sodium sulfate and lead 2 nitrate are mixed, producing that. Now it does just say PBSO4 precipitates, but come on, law of conservation of mass, the sodium doesn't just disappear, the nitrate doesn't just disappear. So the sodium and nitrate must have paired up, and that's the correct formula for sodium nitrate. Now we must balance. Uh, two sodiums, so let's put a two here, two nitrates, we got a two there, one lead, one lead, one sulfate, one sulfate. Okay, so that's good now. Now for the actual calculation. Um, I said you start with liters generally, and then you do your calculation with whatever you can get moles out of. Well, liters times molarity will give moles here. Liters times molarity gives moles here. Oh, it tells you how much of each one. Oh, it gives you all the information you need to get moles out of this one. It also gives you all the information you need to get moles out of this one. You have to do two calculations. It's a limiting reactance question. Limiting reactants. Because of this gives you enough information to get moles, and this also gives you enough information to get moles about a different question, or, or rather gives about a different compound. So um, let's begin with how this calculation should go. In quick shortcut, uh, generally you write down the number of liters first when it comes to something you're going to get moles out of. So 1.25 liters for one and 2.00 liters for the other one. Okay. Let's see, first one, 0 0.0500 mole of which chemical is that lead to nitrate. And that's the amount you get in one liter. For this other one, the two liters is for the 0 0.0250 moles per liter of Na2SO4. Okay, so um, liters cancel liters, liters cancel liters. Both these will give moles for their answer. So that means once we get moles, we can go from moles of what you're being given, these are the reactants, to moles of what you're being asked for. It says calculate the mass of lead sulfate formed. So it's asking you to calculate how much of this. Now, I just realized I probably have been doing this so you can't see too well. So let's make sure I double check that. Okay, liters cancel liters, liter cancel liters. This is our setup so far. I took the liters of lead to nitrate times it by the molarity broken down to moles per liter and did the same thing for the other reactant, the liters, 2.00 liters, times the molarity broken down to moles per liter for the other reactant, the sodium sulfate. Okay, so again, once these... Liters cancel to make moles. Now I can do my stoichiometry, where for every one mole, and that number's coming from here, one mole of lead to nitrate, 
there are one mole, or there is one mole, of lead sulfate. And for this one right here, there's one sodium sulfate, and there's one lead sulfate. Oops. Oops. I forgot to put mole. Anyway, um, once that's done, next step. So moles of sodium sulfate cancel moles of sodium sulfate. Moles of lead nitrate cancel moles of lead nitrate. So moles of lead to sulfate. Now what's it asking for? It's asking for the mass. So that means you need to go look at the mass of one mole of lead sulfate. Because both of these got to find out how many grams of lead to sulfate. Uh, it turns out the molar mass, when you add it all together, is 303.27. Though technically, if lead is only rounded to the tenths place, then I should round the molar mass of anything containing lead to the tenths place also. So technically, although the molar mass of the lead to sulfate comes out to 303.27 grams per mole, um, because lead is the tenths place, I'm going to round to 303.3 grams of lead to sulfate per mole. Yeah, we do typically tell students to round to the hundredths place, even though for something that has a molar mass out to the tenths place, this means anything containing this, you can't round beyond the tenths place. Um, if a student were to accidentally round to the hundredths place for something containing this, I suppose it would be an understandable error that probably would not be counted against them on test in many cases. won't guarantee that every time. But technically, if we're going to follow the rule of round according to the least significant, at least uh, decimal places, then you should round to the tenths place anything containing lead. Anyway, uh, when you do that, the mass is, uh, let's see what it comes out to. We've got, for the top one, 1 1.25 times 0 0.05, so 0. Let's see, and then times 303.3 equals 18.95. We need around to 3 sig figs, 3 sig figs, 3 sig figs. Three sig figs. Everything's three significant figures, so I'm going to round three significant figures, which means 18.9 gets rounded up to 19.0. Equals 19.0 grams of lead to sulfate. Now for the bottom one, we do the same calculation, and that gives you a result of 15.2 grams of lead to sulfate. Now as always, when you have two reactants and you don't know which one's limiting, you pick the one that gives the smaller answer because the limiting reactant is the one that runs out first, so that means this one is the final answer. 15.2 grams of lead to sulfate are formed in this reaction. Okay, all right, that should take care of it. There we go.